Hi, today my topic is the deflection and slope of a beam. And to find the deflection and slope of a beam, we have to use the double integration methods. And by this method, first we will drive the equation. I mean the moment equation, it is second order differential equation EI d square y by dx square equal to d, I mean equal to m. Then if we do one time integration of this equation, it appears as slope equation. You can see the equation EI dy by dx equal to integration m dx plus c1. So here one constant c1 is added. And if we do, I mean, integration twice, then it will come as EI y, y is the deflection equal to double integration m dx again dx because twice integrations plus c1x plus c2. So here two constants c1 and c2 because it is integrated twice. Let's move forward to see how we can achieve these equations. As we know the member of all structures are made up of materials Especially we have seen in all civil engineering projects this type of a structure we faced and this all structure especially the beam it deforms when it is loaded. That's why question comes about the slope and deflection. For example, a floor beam that deflects too much may cause cracks in the ceiling below. But another question comes in our minds how these deformation happens. As we know through studies, analysis and by research, we came to a solution or a conclusion that this deformation of a structure is caused by bending moments, by axial forces, and by shear forces even. And another important thing we learned about beams and frames that the largest deflection caused by bending moments. Here I mentioned it. Whereas for trusses, I did not mention it here, largest values are caused by axial forces. Deflections are also caused by shear forces and most of the cases we neglect it because it's quite small in beam like structures. And here I put the term elastic curve for the displaced position of the longitudinal axis. And the red curve, you can see that. For a bending beam, there is a diagram here. It is a bending beam. The angle d theta appears below two adjacent section spaced at a distance dx. The length of the neutral axis is unchanged. It is important points. And here the deformation of an arbitrary fiber AB with capital letters I have written AB. This fiber AB it is located at a distance y in the right hand side I have written y from the neutral axis. So 
these deformations of AB, we can write it as in the left top, I have write the equations y d theta. If the radius of the curvature, I mean curved segment is denoted by r, already it is in the diagram, we can see that. Then the strain in fiber AB, it will be equal to y d theta divided by r d theta equal to y by r. Now, the linear stress strain relationships, we know this, epsilon equal to sigma by E. Sigma is called stress in fiber AB and E is the modulus of elasticity. So, from the two equations, we can write y by r equal to sigma by E. Through cross multiplications, we get sigma equal to E y by r. So what you can say? The stress varies linearly with the distance y from the neutral axis. That's what we can say from these equations. Here, I have taken a differential area dA. I marked it with a nice color. This dA, if it is multiplied by sigma, bending stress, then it will be dF, differential force. Now sigma value we know already previous slide, we got Ey by R. So we get that dF equation equal to Ey by R dA. Again, this bending moment m, it is equal to the sum of the moments about the neutral axis of the force acting at all fibers of the beam cross section. So, we can write the resultant of all elemental moment about neutral axis must be equal to the bending moment on that section. That is why we write m equal to integration of dm, differential m. Now dm we can write as ydf and again putting the value of df equation comes as e by r integration y square dA. This y square dA, integration of y square dA, it is nothing but moment of inertia. So we are writing, replacing this by I. So our equation is m equal to Ei by R. So in terms of R, we can write R equal to Ei by m. It is most important formula for radius of curvature. So, for a curve y equal to function of x, if a curve equation y equal to function of x, then the radius of curvature we can write as r equal to 1 plus dy by dx square whole to the power 3 by 2 divided by d square y by dx square. Actually, this equation we got from calculus. I am not going in details of it, but we have to keep it in our memory that r equal to this. Already in previous slide, we got also r equal to in another way, but we will use it in next slides. So here, from this calculus equations, what we got dy by dx actually it is slope. And this is very small. If our beam deflection is also a small we know. Because if dy by dx equal to slope is very small as very small amount of deflection occurs in a beam. So what will happen for dy by dx whole square? It will be more and more smaller. 
so we can neglect it so r equal to 1 by just d square y by dx square this part we have to take now we got radius of curvature equation in two forms one is from Flexer formula that is r equal to ei over m and another one we got radius of curvature from calculus it is r equal to 1 by d square y by dx square this is second order d square y by dx square second order differentials so equating these two we can get d square y by dx square equal to m by ei this is the equation it was our target to get so d square y by dx square this is second order differential and we can represent it by y double prime so in short we can write as ei y double prime equal to m this is the most important equation to find the moments so we got moment equation previous slide we have seen ei d square y by dx square equal to m so from this equation if we do integration one time so we'll get slope equation so it comes as integration m dx plus c1 and left hand side ei dy by dx this is first order differentials equation and if we do integration again i mean twice so we'll get the deflection equation e i y y is the deflection in the right hand side double integral m dx again dx because we have to do integrate twice plus there is two constant c1 x plus c2 these are the three equations we need and we got it and that's all for today thanks for watching please subscribe